Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guy. It's a phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 5, Episode 18, titled Miracle Man. It originally premiered on June 21st, 1989. It is written by Robert Ward. Name should sound very familiar. Redemption in Blood, Asian Cut, Hard Knocks, even like three or four more others. On top of that, he still has one more coming. All good episodes. Mm-hmm. And co-written by Jillian Horvath, who this is the only episode they wrote for. Also wrote for Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and Quantum Leap. Oh, <laughs> back in the news again. Hey, I don't care what Leap. you say. Quantum Leap was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is directed by Alan Meyerson, Bing! who also directed our episode last week in World of Trouble. So this is the only two that he got. He got cut out of NBC. Like, no. Yeah, no, you're Meyerson? not going to be there. <laughs> Absolutely not. Meyerson directed this one? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> USA was like, all right, bring them on over. <laughs> Before we can start, I can check in switch into each other's lives. Pals, you're wondering, hey, uh, what's up with the Lost episodes and where's the free fall? Reminder, we are doing the Lost episodes first because it makes more sense story-wise that if, like, I don't know, me and John don't know what's going to happen in free fall. So if, like, they get hit by a nuclear bomb in free fall. How did you know? And everyone dies. You cheated. <laughs> They don't magically come back to life in a rebuilt Miami. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> They're ghosts. How did you know? <laughs> so we are going through the Lost episodes. First, this is Lost episode number two. Now, there's technically only three Lost episodes. There's these two and then Leap of Faith, which will happen next week. And then technically Too Little Too Late isn't a Lost episode. It just it literally never aired until like a year later. Yeah, it was a year later on mm-hmm. USA. I th- that one's a little special and it didn't make any sense to watch that one after we fall. No, it won't, especially yeah. when you see what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get on with this Lost episode. Spoiler, I think this one should have made it into the regular rotation on NBC and not into the Lost episodes. All those Joey Harden stupid episodes make yeah. it into the proper. This one should have made it in the regular. We had to watch Joey Harden unnecessarily. <laughs> we could have had extra Izzy. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> let's go break this one down. When we open up, the duo are waiting for some turkey who's really late. They're really <laughs> mad about it, too. That damn turkey. Well, you all know who said that. <laughs> Park who cares Simon. about turkey? Look at Tub Soup. That is just amazing. <laughs> he is always <sighs> amazing. And unfortunately, we never get to see Trudy. But every time Trudy's in a scene, she's the same thing. She's Her clothes are amazing. Mm-hmm. And- uh, amazing for... <laughs> uh, not being a police officer like last week she was wearing like some kind of workout bustier thing as a shirt yeah but not, Tubbs is wearing to start of the episode his suits throughout the whole episode are great he's yeah. constantly got like the green with the black checkers and he's got like the purple jacket hey, all these different hey Stan was fancy okay he was fancy in his button up shirt and black jeans <laughs> Stan was looking fancy in this episode <laughs> But I was just saying, the suit that he's wearing to start this episode out is just way above all of the other ones. That him and Crockett and the, you know, the white Lambo, they just start the episode off in that, style for being parked in the middle of nowhere. That is the vice style that everyone aspires to. Like mm-hmm. that, the suits in the car and yep. being parked next to the marina and the ocean. They're waiting for two men. They pull up. One of them is Torres, who's their like connection to this bigger crime ring that's happening with Aguila and Parena. They talked to Torres, who has stolen coke from his boss. So this is a crazy deal that they have orchestrated here. He has stolen these drugs from Parena, who would obviously murder him if he found out. We're going to call him <laughs> Midface Jr. I'll get to that point <laughs> later. <laughs> then suddenly... Music starts blaring from upstairs in this warehouse and a man on like a PA system. Stop right there. No crimes will be committed on this block. You're about to be taken down by the miracle man. And he pops out of the window. There's a couple gunshots. He jumps down off of the second story and then puts his gun down next to the duo. Says, you guys stay right here. I'm going to go catch this villain and just takes off running. I don't. I think that was yes. really a rat man that he was talking into, a rat man 2000. <laughs> I had one of those, so I would know. <laughs> what I love about this scene is Tubbs and Crockett, 
don't give a crap. They just stand there and watch the whole thing go down. He's completely ruining their bust, but at the same time, they're just stunned. Like, it's like watching a car wreck, you know? <laughs> like they've just got to watch this guy run off and chase down these drug dealers. And they at the very end, Crockett takes shot. a bite of the gun, which is <laughs> yeah, a, apparently part. a chocolate gun. <laughs> he smells he's a little old. Chocolate, though. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most random thing that has ever happened in a Vice episode. That he smells that gun and then just takes a bite of it. <laughs> and Tubbs doesn't even flinch. He's like, okay, like whatever, chalk a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My favorite part of Miracle Man is that tape deck that he's got his own theme music. Yes. And he plays it while he's hunting. Yeah, he's got it like on his his waistband. Like, yeah. No, uh, no, I love the sunglasses. The sunglasses got me the whole episode. Those big square sunglasses, like wrestlers used to rock in the eighties. <laughs> Never mind. I'm. I, I love Miracle Man. We're gonna talk a lot more about him as we go through this breakdown. But before we do, because we go to the opening credits here, and this is when we stop to check in with this week's guest stars and Miracle Man. Is not a virgin to Miami Vice. No, he is not. He is Jose Perez, who also appeared as Juan Carlos Silva in the episode Junk Love. In this episode, he's playing Georgie Miracle Man Esteban. He was in some TV work, actually quite a bit of TV work, you know, 11 episodes of Colucci's Department. Fantastic show. <laughs> Sorry, we missed that one. 24 episodes of that f- fantastic sitcom On the Rocks. Um, where are these show that? <laughs> <laughs> these are all from the 70s. 17 episodes of New York Undercover. As far as movies go, he appeared in the original 94 Sicaro, The Mask of Zorro, and The Way of the Gun. Our next guest star is Zach Greenier, and he has also appeared in the show before. He played an IAD officer in the episode Teresa. Mm, that's like one of those you might know you, you forget about. You might know him as the boss in the movie Fight Club. He's actually been in a ton of crap. Yeah, he's been so, a lot of stuff. And not only, so I want to focus on the fact that he played two different characters in two different episodes of Miami Vice. He also played, before Vice, two different characters in two different episodes of the show The Equalizer. <laughs> And then two episodes of NYPD Blue playing, guess what? Two different characters. Yep. <laughs> How many times Kinda good at this. Dennis Francis ass? <laughs> How many times did everyone have to see? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's been in a bunch of nine episodes of 24, nine episodes of Deadwood. He, he did six episodes playing various characters in Law & Order. That means he played a different character in each episode. <laughs> so uh, most importantly, TV-wise, he was in an episode of Crossing Jordan. <laughs> we need a Gotta bell. work it in. Bing. We need a bell to like <laughs> ring it every time Crossing Jordan gets mentioned. And then like movies other than the club, Problem Child 2, Delirious, Cliffhanger, Tommy Boy, Twister, Donnie Brasco, Shaft, Swordfish, The New Go Cop. So like he's been in a bunch of crap. Our next guest star is John Castellanos. Sounds good to me. Yeah, we're going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Plays Carlos Perina. He's known most notable for two daytime soaps, The Bold and the Beautiful in 1987, and then a 15-year stunt on The Young and the Restless. Damn. Believe it or not, he is also an accomplished Shakespearean actor. Actually, he's been featured in all kinds of Shakespearean uh, stage acting stuff, whatever they call that. Theater. All right, our next guest are almost... Sounded really cool, because when I first Googled his name, the first Daniel Groho that came up, a.k.a. The Millionaire, is an ex-gangster who robbed around 150 banks and com- committed over 500 robberies <laughs> I mean, in only the 80s if- and 90s. And then I guess he integrated into high society and wrote a bunch of books. The actual Daniel Groho, he is a manager and actor, but it doesn't say who he manages, so I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. Hey. According to everyone uh, he else, was in I'm one an actor episode. Manager too. Uh, yeah, he he's a lot more boring than this other guy. One episode of Cagney and Lacey, a movie called Salsa, something called One Man Force, <laughs> and Revenge. Hey, don't talk bad about that salsa movie. That's a good movie. <laughs> It's about salsa dancing, obviously, uh, not the, you know, damn. condiment. <laughs> damn. Next, we have Conrad Roberts. He plays Commissioner Henry Wil- Williford. He also played the commissioner in the episode Miami Squeeze, which was about six episodes, seven episodes ago. He what? was in over 100 episodes of a TV series called The Doctor from 68 to 69. He had a handful 
episode appearances. He was also in The Mask of Zorro with Jose Perez. Uh, he was also in something called The Mosquito Coast, The Scorpion King, and most recently, A Wrinkle in Time. Now, we're going to throw a shout out to someone who technically was uncredited in the episode. The crack dealer on the playground, he was a singer-songwriter named Mickey Zetz. He was in a number of bands. First, Them Ickies, and Mickey's Ickies, <laughs> and most recently, just The Ickies. John just wanted to say those names, I think. That's why he brought them up. <laughs> yes. kept getting better. I just wanted to throw a shout out there to Mickey Zetz and The Ickies. <laughs> When we come back from the opening credits, the ladies are with Tubbs now going over the case. In Torres, to get to Agia and then Perena, that's their path through here, is that is through Torres. Stan harasses, quote, Tubby, which I love is that what part. his name is going to be throughout the rest of the episode for me, for <laughs> the weirdness that they experienced out on that last bus. Sonny and Dad are nowhere to be found for the rest of the episode now. They are off, I believe... One is testifying in Orlando, and then one is, I don't know, fucked off. No, they're the, both yeah, in Orlando weird. testifying on Crockett's case. Oh, okay. They're both testifying at the same case. Gotcha. It, but it's Crockett's case. Wilford comes over with Eric Terry, who's going to be filming a very special TV show, which they're going to follow around detectives or police officers and get the behind the scenes work from police officers and i'm just thinking in my head what you gonna do what, what you gonna, gonna do, do with <laughs> oh wait a minute no, that's not what we're talking about it's a different network <laughs> what am i doing yeah didn't it appear on the air sometime around it's like now yeah, like three months after this episode came out it aired on fox interesting timing interesting also <laughs> that it was all always set in florida it was in broward long, county in the very beginning it was always in broward county you're like damn don't go to broward county <laughs> and then we saw Pierce County and we're like, why? And <laughs> never in Washington. <laughs> never in Pierce County, Washington. Oh, yeah, always in Lakewood. <laughs> Tubby and Stan. Yeah. No, are... that's not exactly the show he's pitching, Dominic. Listen to what he says. He says the show is going to follow them as vice cops. And he's going to be like the league cop mm -hmm. in the show. And he's going to go with them on stakeouts and stuff. Yeah, and Williford says that Tubby and Stan are to give Terry their full cooperation. Obviously, there's a problem here in that they're supposed to be undercover, which is exactly what Tubby brings up. So he says, you, you can't put us on TV. It's like, no, no, don't worry about it. We will make sure you're covered up. And Williford says, this is straight from the commissioner. And then just leaves. <laughs> and they're like, we don't care. And they just leave too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which they shouldn't care. Like this is just, this is just a bunch of PR PS. They even jump into the caddy and then drive away, and then Terry scrambles over to the news van and they give chase. And Stan and Tubby, or I'm gonna call them the Tubby Duo. <laughs> the Tubby Duo show up over at Torres's house, and he's dead. Agia has struck again. He's dead. <laughs> the way you said that. And he's dead, by the way. So now they're racking their brain trying to figure out, okay, how do we get closer to a Agia? He was our only path into getting to Parena. And then you hear that music, like, oh, Miracle Man, you're the only one to save this neighborhood. And you see him come around and he's talking to a crowd saying that both Torres and Agia were bad men. And then he sees the tubby duo and says, they're drug dealers too. I seen him, which he mm -hmm. has. He saw them yeah. making a drug buy, but then he just ran off. <laughs> but he didn't see. Well, well not Twitech, Twitech, though. He saw no. Tubbs and Crockett. We saw Tubby. So, <laughs> so then the crowd starts to turn on them. The Tubby duo go into a house. They ask the police officer to drag the Miracle Man over. That way they can talk to him while he's chanting to the crowd about getting the deadly poisons off their streets and bring them street justice. When he gets inside the house, they flash their badges and tell him. What are you doing? You're messing up everything that we're trying to do, and you're exposing us to these crowds. He says, I'm sorry. I didn't. I thought you were drug dealers. Uh, how can I help you? How can the Miracle Man be a part of this? Dude, he almost kind of pitches it like he's recruiting a sidekick. Like maybe, <laughs> you know, make Stan like sensational son or phenomenal friend. Marvel Miho. <laughs> Over at Parana's. And if you saw his face, now that you see it in the episode, he looks like Mittface. He looks like Mittface's son. Yes. <laughs> Poor Mittface. Oh, we rest miss in you. peace. Rest in peace, Mittface. We miss you. <laughs> Who else is going to torture 
Tango and Cash in that prison, that fake prison they have set up. Also, who's going to come back as a zombie cop to murder people? <laughs> <laughs> Maniac cop. <laughs> so Mini Mitface is pissed Mini at Agia. <laughs> He's mad because the Miracle Man is out there saying that Agia did the hit, which means that he's going to be linked to Harena. It's like, you got to be more careful. Take care of this Miracle Man guy or something. All I know is that you got to get him out of here. I'm just saying, like, these guys don't strike me like the uh, hardest of, of gangsters. They really struggle. By the end of the episode, they really look bad that they're they're getting uh, chased around town by Miracle Man. No, actually, Gina will bring that up, too. She's like, what's up with Parana? Like, why all the smoke and mirrors and the secrecy and stuff like that, too? He's a little paranoid. Yeah, he's very paranoid. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, at a restaurant, the Tubby Duo are doing a deal with Agia. They're playing hardball with him. Like, Stan is playing Stan hardball. Stan is playing hardball this whole episode. Let's get that straight. Oh, he's yeah. a hard ass in this thing. <laughs> he's getting shit done. He's got to get this stuff done. <laughs> All that frequent frequenting yard sales. Maybe he's like playing. He's being Burnett, right? He's got to play. Well, he could. And Rico. He doesn't get called up to the big times very often. Rico gets to be Rico Cooper, and yeah. then there's Stan. Yeah, it's just Stan. He's just Stan. Give him a name for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> or change his name. No, like, he's like Big Stan. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of gangster drug dealer's name is Stan? <laughs> So now we go over to the best part of this episode. Oh, sorry. The Miracle Man is fantastic, but we're always happy to see Izzy. And Izzy has himself a new job. A new house, too. A new house, a new job. He's selling. He has a greenhouse. He's selling exotic plants to people. Gets a call from a customer who's complaining about their Venus flytrap not eating all of the flies in their house. And Izzy just nicely suggests that maybe it's their personal hygiene. That's the problem. (laughs) Maybe you're disgusting. (laughs) That's coming from Izzy. Yes. <laughs> Miracle I Man. I love that they're trying to return a defective Venus flytrap. <laughs> She's not eating them fast enough. I thought, you know, like swallow them whole <laughs> and then just move on to the next one. Miracle Man comes in and Izzy doesn't recognize him at first because of the sunglasses. That's got to be it. <laughs> Total like Clark Kent Superman. Clearly, because he's in his superhero gear. He couldn't recognize them, but takes the sunglasses off. It's, oh, my cousin. They are very close, actually, because you find out later in the episode that when they were really poor in Cuba, they frequented the streets together. They're not actually family, but they no, stayed but they alive like, because yeah. of, of each other. They go inside, have a drink. Izzy's very happy to see his cousin. He closes the door, closes all the blinds. And is like, is there something wrong with your brain? Why are you doing this to Agia and Parena? Don't you know about these men and how bad they are? You can't just go yeah. around bad-mouthing I lo- them. Uh, and I love what he said. He says, guys think gun control being your target. <laughs> Is anyone else freaked out that Izzy's being very logical? Yes. It's like he's a changed man. He's got a real legit job being logical. Real company mm-hmm. being smart, doesn't want to rock the boat. But then Terry comes in talking about how he can get Miracle Man on TV and he's like, on a oh. show, Society <laughs> Watchdog. And that's when Izzy's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He won't do this for free. You make sure you run this through his... <laughs> consultant. <laughs> consultant. That's the word that I was looking for. Don't tempt me, Terry. We can go to Oprah. We can go to Phil. We can go to Lettersman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me, bro. <laughs> Not Dr. Phil, by the way. Phil Donaldson. <laughs> Phil Donahue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Terry says we can come to some sort of an agreement. That night at a bar, Agia's having drinks and some, you know, some, you know right, right, just right there at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> the tubby duo come in and they're going to seal the deal but miracle man comes storming in he has got no fear he just comes walking right in announcing to the crowd that miracle man is there and that agia is a dirty scoundrel who poisons the streets and he starts pointing to him he has he gives no fucks no he just comes zero. walking right in <laughs> No, but this is also kind of, you can feel the cameras because this this is almost Miracle Man Citizen Arrest Take One. And that's essentially what happens because right when Ikea is going to start roughing him up for being there and ranting and raving in front, front of that entire crowd, that's when Terry's camera crew come rushing in and the tubby duo are forced to slink away. They're not able to make a move. So then when they get back to the precinct, Tubby is yelling at Miracle Man, you ruined a perfectly good bust. We had an opportunity to bring down Agia, but you came just barging in, speaking your craziness, and now we have to do something totally else. You totally messed this whole thing up. And Miracle Man is really apologizing. I'm sorry I didn't realize that 
it was that big of a deal. I thought my citizen's arrest would stick, but I did a perfectly good citizen's arrest on him. <laughs> Tubbs and Switek are doing their best ad cop, worst cop. But I, I love Miracle Man at the end of this, except on Mondays, you know, my force field's down on Mondays. <laughs> and then he laughs. I'm just kidding, guys. It's a joke. I'm not crazy. <laughs> he really wants to help, though. And he's even though they're yelling at him, he, he realizes at the time, like, OK, I, I know I overstepped my bounds here a little bit, but you can't do this without me. So he's really sticking to. He believes he's doing the right thing. And in the end, the Miami police really do need community leaders to help clean up the streets. Just not the way Miracle Man. Not the way he's doing not it. Not the way now. he's doing it. But they, instead of picking on him, they could very easily turn it around and say, look, we want to work with you. But they're also but here's trying to, the right way to do it. Yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, but I think also you have to look at it from their perspective. They're also trying to protect him. He's going to get killed because he's just not doing it safely. He's just doing it out there. He could be See, a community leader and not go on national television and call out these people and get murdered doing it. See, I don't want to boil uh, my final thoughts, but I don't think they do enough to stop him from doing what he's doing. Gina comes in and says, Williford wants to speak to you two right now. He wants to talk right now. They go in and see him. Terry is there. And w Williford says that Terry has a good idea. He wants the Tubby duo to go on a show and debate Miracle Man, which is the dumbest idea that the Miami police could do. And they bring up about their secret identity. But even that, why would the Miami Police Department go on record no. and defend their actions? Miracle How the commissioner doesn't understand what undercuts. Like, even if it, they don't show their faces or they blur out, like, they're like, this is a shadow. They'll figure it out. People will figure it out. I don't understand. Like, does he not understand? The, the commissioner want to be, just let the commissioner go on TV then. Yeah, exactly. Let him go on TV and talk about it and debate it. He really wants the publicity. Well, then he should be the one or have a regular policeman who has like, does like community outreach go on there. And because there's ones that work in the community anyway. Just not the undercover cops. Mm -hmm. The Tebby duo storm out. Wilford says, don't worry, Terry, I'll work on them. Just give me some more time with them. He never works on them. Out on the street, <laughs> the Tubby Duo are waiting for Agia, and they see him out there. They kind of time out this, like, where they're going to do a, like, a drive-by. Like, they're going to drive up, and they're going to try and drive past, but and then Agia is going to stop You see this great. Tubbs almost hits that hooker walking across the street. <laughs> then it catches the attention of Agia, and so he comes walking up trying to get the deal back, and Tubbs is totally like, oh, this chump again. They totally just treat him like... Oh, no, no, we don't want to work with you. Tubbs and Switek are totally just treating them like a chump. And them like basically beg to get the offer back together. They end up able to uh, set up another attempt at a drug bust. Hitches off as t Tubbs almost hit hits the chick walking across the street. <laughs> like, yeah, really begs mm -hmm. to like, please let me continue to do this deal. Because he knows that he's going to get in trouble from up above him. That's yeah. why. And Tubby says, well, we want to do it with your boss. Not you. <laughs> yeah, we want to talk to your supervisor. <laughs> That's never good. That night at Piranhas, Miracle Man, they're showing the taping of Miracle Man being on Terry's show. And he's talking about getting the poison off the street. And Terry's like, and so you're telling me that the vice ignored you? And that they're not doing squat like that's how yeah. would the police department after seeing that sh that episode, like hearing that that's what was done, that they'd continue to let Terry be anywhere near them? Because the commissioner's an idiot and he just <laughs> it's not, he probably didn't watch it. <laughs> Parana is getting a late payment from a man named Ricky, who is coked out of his mind. Ricky then mm -hmm. after he makes his payment, he gets roughed up as Parana leaves. Right. When he got murdered, didn't he? kind of weird I, you well, see them, like, goes, consider this a warning then they beat the crap out of him anyway it's like well, that, that's not much <laughs> of a warning <laughs> then Parana goes inside and miracle man drops out like a keebler elf out of a cabinet <laughs> and knocks Parana out inside of his own house no one is yes. safe from miracle man he can pull miracles he got inside of Parana's house found a cabinet that happened to be right above a door, was able to squat in there and wait for the time when Perino would come in there all by himself. The man has no fear, then steals his drug money that he just got paid from Ricky, and then the next day he's just giving it away for free to people on the street. Telling him where he got it. That's where the big part was. He's like out there telling yeah. him he took it from drug dealers. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he's going all Robin Hood with it. Yeah, he knocks him out cold. You haven't seen the episode. Miracle Man is like 5'6", 130 pounds. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's why he can fit in cabinets. Oh, so it, <laughs> yes, exactly. Then he goes and he's giving it away. What makes it even better is Izzy is there selling merchandise, <laughs> including toilet seats. I was going to say toilet Miracle seats. Man toilet seats. <laughs> the Tubby duo aren't surprised that he is connected to Izzy. They pull Miracle Man aside and say, so where'd you get the money? Did you win the lottery or something? And he... Miracle Man takes him outside and shows him Izzy and says that Izzy's going to build a rehab center right here in the barrio. Yeah, Izzy is not going to build a rehab center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Izzy's got dollar signs in his yeah, eyes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then out of nowhere, someone comes up and starts to do a drive-by on Miracle Man. Everyone runs and hides. They're only shooting at Miracle Man who dies behind a car. And then as the car drives away, Miracle Man gives chase on foot. If Tubbs wouldn't have stopped him, I fully believe based on what Miracle Man has been able to accomplish, he would have caught that car. <laughs> he would have caught him. Mm -hmm. yeah. At this point, I believe in Miracle Man. And I believe Miracle Man is actually going to clean up these streets. He is doing a better job than Vice. And it was a pretty deal. Not only was it a drive-by, but he hit a hot dog cart, which is a <laughs> felony in Florida. <laughs> he hit Stan right in the gut with that one. Because he was planning on getting a hot dog right after maybe, <laughs> you know... Otherwise, maybe a misdemeanor, but but hitting that hot dog cart, that's serious time. <laughs> the hot dog man is pissed. He's like, what the hell? Yeah, he was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are there so many hot dog carts in Miami? I'm telling you, I believe in Miracle Man. I believe he will. He has the best chance of cleaning up those streets. He's nuts. How can he be? He's crazy. <laughs> How much has Vice actually done getting drugs off of the Miami streets? They're, it's all in the lockup. All they've done is drive the prices up and make it more profitable for drug dealers. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. So if you don't believe in Vice, what the, the hell are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so now because of the attempt on his life, Vice Squad are finally going to do something about Miracle Man. They take him into protective custody in which they're going to force Gina to babysit him while they go do stuff. It's it's actual babysitting. They go get like snacks at the store. <laughs> she comes back with you know, Yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Swytek comes back with snacks and food and, and Swytek's a jerk to Miracle Man. He is. Yes. He comes in and he, and he like mm -hmm. basically says like he's a nut job and, and he's like but a little kid. After he's a jerk to him, they get their Academy Award scene. Yeah, this is when Miracle Man lays it out there. After he gets that rude comment from Stan, he storms off and that's when the Tubby Duo go leave. They have their deal set up with to a Gia for pairing up. They leave. Gina yeah, goes back to go babysitting. Gina goes back and talks to Miracle Man and he says that he knows that people laugh at him. And he starts punching these this like stack of mattresses that's in the back of the place. And Gina just says, You wanna talk about it, sport? That big guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that big guy. <laughs> Miracle Man says that his daughter died after overdosing, seeing him as a user and then became one herself. So obviously he carries all this guilt of what like that life that he brought into her and then she died. And so now he feels like if I can save one other person's child for them, then that's good. I sh I'm not going to stop. That's why I'm doing this. But it is his fault though, because he isn't it his fault if he was doing drugs in front of his kid and she wanted to be just like him. <laughs> Hey, Sorry, locked up. <laughs> Sorry, Miracle Man. But it's like I kind of feel like I'm responsible. There's no kind of about it. You are responsible. <laughs> I think he has a hero's origin story. You know, like he's he's a legitimate crime fighter. Miracle Man's up there with other real life superheroes, guys like Phoenix Jones. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Back at Piranha's, Cooper and Stan, this is a good fake last name. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> they meet and so Piranha guys, says, is this drug bust attempt number three or four? <laughs> we lost count. <laughs> <laughs> Piranha says, there's too much heat from Miracle Man and you have to take care of him. He's too much of a nuisance and then I'll do a deal. And Tubby says, that's it? That's all you want? It, done. I can, I can take care of that for you. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my specialty. <laughs> I'm Tubby. <laughs> Back at the safe house, the Tubby duo pull up and 
And they're actually kind of excited to tell Miracle Man, like, hey, you are being successful. Parana is actually afraid of you. And so you won't believe that he won't do this deal until you go away. But when they come in, they find Gina locked in the bathroom. And he locked her in there, apologized several times, and then Miracle Man away. (laughs) (laughs) Turned on his music. she fell for the old i got a headache can you get me some aspirin like how come you can never get yourself aspirin when you have a headache i don't know like what is that that's like a bunch of them have used that they use that in other shows too it's like i told he told me i had a headache i went to get the medicine and they locked me in the bathroom it's like okay but when you have a headache can you not move you have no use of your legs or what i don't remember seeing like a chair against the door or anything tubs just goes and opens the door and she's in there and Guys, how many bathrooms have locks on the outside? I, I don't. Good question. Good question. But there was some <laughs> weird safe house that they're in with dirty mattresses. So who knows? <laughs> so the duo go over to Izzy's greenery, and Izzy is pissed. He can't believe that they lost him. Thought he, they could be trusted to take care of his cousin. Oh, well, okay, but let's not get high and mighty here, Izzy. Making money off of him, not caring about, really caring about. He does care about his safety, but he's putting him out there. In the beginning, he's like, you're crazy. I can't believe you're doing this. But now that there's money involved, go ahead and do it. So, I mean, I think he cares about him. But obviously, he's got his priorities not in the right place right now. Hard to know if he's more upset about them losing his cousin or them cutting into his bottom line. But I do want to give him some credit. He throws out a really nice Monty Python reference in this scene. So that's when Tubby gets an idea (laughs) and he makes a call to the hospital no he calls gina oh yes that's because right. he can't do that stuff on his own <laughs> he don't know how to work a phone he needs a woman <laughs> get me a woman who's also a cop who can work a phone so she can call around to all these hospitals that have a pine in it <laughs> I- i'm surprised he called gina though i mean there's a chance she could have been locked in the bathroom again <laughs> she- that's why they don't let her go out anymore she keeps locking herself in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> on the inside, Gina. <laughs> Real fast, there's a scene with Miracle Man. He's in a weird alley. It's got like several washing machines and a an stove. oven. There's like, an <laughs> oven. It's supposed to be like a laundry. Like it's. I think it was supposed to be. I'm focused on this because I was like, "What the f- is going on?" <laughs> it's supposed to be like the back where it's like their laundry room because it's kind of like open air, but also have a gate. So it's like washing machine, oven. Dryer, washing machine, <laughs> oven, dryer. What are you doing? Are you like putting oh, your is pants he supposed in the to be oven? strung out? <laughs> Miracle Man is clearly having mental problems. Too. Yeah, and this is when this episode takes a hard left turn. Yeah, it gets we go real from, serious. We're kind of <laughs> in silly town, and the tubby duo mm-hmm. are getting really frustrated with dealing with Miracle Man. We kind of see this behind the scenes when you're a police officer, you got to deal with some real nut jobs. And then this is going to turn a corner to be an actual nut job. Okay. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think that's very sensitive. If you don't think that's sensitive, in the next scene, they explain that Miracle Man's only weakness is drugs, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be normal, but was it for the damn drugs? <laughs> the ladies go to the hospital and they find out he didn't work there. He was a patient there. And by the way, he, he gets triggered in a depressive state. He likes to stay up. Yeah. He's like manic depressive. Yeah, he's manic depressive. So if he goes down, the only way he can stay up is, you know, doing coke. So good luck with that. He'll be prone to doing coke. <laughs> Just be ready for that. <laughs> in Miami? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the most we've seen of the ladies in wheat. That's a doctor, by the way. She's not a nurse. Okay. She's like the head of, head of the thing or something. Yeah. Trying to call her a nurse. <laughs> that lady worked her ass off to become a doctor. <laughs> It is. It's actually four nice years in medical see. school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's actually nice to see the ladies out actually working. It's nice to have them talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the background wearing <laughs> spandex. <laughs> the doctor says he's most likely in his old neighborhood. He talked about that a lot in that playground. Particular, this playground in Shepherd's Park. So we jump to there, and Mi- Miracle Man stumbles on this random drug deal. When they see Miracle Man, they freak out, which is why I believe in Miracle Man. People are afraid of Miracle Man. And when he just happens on this drug deal, they drop the drugs and run. When he sees the drugs, he calls Agia and tells him that he's going to take him down. Come meet me right now. Chump, where you at? So how how does he know that he's at the bar? How does he know the bar's <laughs> number? He's at a payphone. Like, does he just have it memorized? That guy's so always many bar. questions. <laughs> Did he just start calling? Was it like the third bar he called? Was he just calling like every bar? 
Is there a guy there with a, with a mullet and a, and a feather-thin mustache? <laughs> the Tubby Duo find out and they start heading over to the park. When they get there, they see Agia and Miracle Man wrestling. And in the middle of the scuffle, Agia accidentally gets shot by his own gun. By the way, they're wrestling. And Miracle Man has an easy out in this that he was defending himself. And yes, okay, he called Agia to come there. But it wasn't his gun. He didn't pull the gun. Gia did. And then Miracle Man defended himself. And Agia shot himself in, during the scuffle. But of course, Miracle Man has to be arrested. He gets brought into a circus that's waiting for him at the precinct. The press is all over it, including Terry, who's there watching now, who is supposed to be his star that has fallen from grace. In an interrogation room, Mi Miracle Man is there with Gina and the Tubby Duo. Miracle Man is despondent. Tub says he has a visitor. And in comes his wife and his youngest daughter. So that's not the police station. That's the hospital. Okay. That's, what just, just that's you know. the they, hospital, yeah. That's where they, they've taken him for he's going to be, like, committed. Where, okay. Where is he yeah, going because, to get yeah, because yeah. He's, he's handcuffed when they bring him in. Yeah, but they, they you're right. They, but they yeah, take but him but they to took the him in, like, a, yeah, like a 5150. So, like, like, a they got him, like that's a padded room kind of mm -hmm. yeah. deal. Anyway, go ahead. When his wife comes in and he sees his youngest daughter, Amy, he says, Teresa, Teresa which is his oldest daughter that died of the drug overdose. And the wife says, no, this is your youngest daughter. We need you to come home. We need you back because he's been committed in this hospital for a long time. And now that he's back, you know, you start to get your hopes up that maybe your husband and your father are starting to get things put back together. And now here he is right back, mm -hmm. maybe even worse than what he was before. I felt so sad for that little mm -hmm. girl. He didn't even like acknowledge I her know. that he just thought it was his other daughter. And it's like, but I'm right here. <laughs> like, I'm still your daughter and mm -hmm. I'm right here. Do you even know my name? <laughs> Stan and Gina escort them out and then leave Miracle Man back to his window, which is at this point barely functioning. Quick scene of the duo talking on the phone. And they basically, they're basically telling uh, Purina, we didn't kill him. I mean, close enough, right? He's in a mental <laughs> institution. Like. Tub takes, like, he takes responsibility for that. He's like, but I got him locked away. It's like, what, you, what did you make him go crazy? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why we need Izzy in more episodes. Because then Izzy comes in dressed as a doctor, saying that he specializes in Hispanic de depressives. <laughs> Sorry. And it's spreading like yes. crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. he's not and wrong on that. <laughs> apparently, Geraldo Rivera's real name is Gary Rivers. <laughs> as a Hispanic, can you vouch for Hispanic depressive disorder? <laughs> Actually, no, that's the opposite <laughs> side of my family. That, that side of my family is not depressive. <laughs> Gets, he's able to su successfully convince this nurse to let him in and to see Mi Miracle Man. Then when he gets in there, he knocks him out with a bedpan. And Sorry. then they're able to sneak out. Okay, but let's talk about this. What is his motive? Why did he really go in there to break him out? Did he really go in there to break him out? Because he was like, oh, I don't want to see my cousin in this state. Like, this is awful when he got in there. Because when he gets in the door, he's like, oh, my God. When he sees, like, what he's actually in there, in, when he's in. He's like, what kind of room is this? But what do you, what were his actual motives to go there? What do you think his motive? I think, I think he was trying to break him out you know when they got escaped from cuba he was just going to break him out uh like old time i think that's when it really set in izzy after he broke him out how bad he was i think you're right about the transition i think he broke in there to get him out because it they were in business together that's what i think that he did it because he wanted the business to continue mm -hmm. and then when he got in there he was like oh my god like this is really bad yeah so he i don't even think it's then i think it's when he gets back to the house and he sees and that's what this next scene is, is that they're back at his greenhouse and he sees how bad of a shape that Miracle Man is in. And he's trying to cheer him up. But then that's when Terry comes to the door and just comes barging in and hands Miracle Man some coke and a new suit for his yeah. superhero ego. I think his original plan was he was going to get him back and they were still going to be able to make money because he's still talking about it. Like, we got to get you when he gets him back to the place. He's like, snap out of it. Stop saying that stuff. Like, stop sounding crazy. We got to get you back so we can finish our business deal, basically. And then, yeah, and then everything goes bad and mm -hmm. he realizes that he made a mistake. That he shouldn't have got him out. And it's, you know, he's partly responsible because now they're in there giving him drugs. So now we're going to go to the last scene of the episode. We're at the Paranda deal. They're meeting up at this bar that's at the end of some highway. The ladies are outside and listening to the backup for the tubby duo who are inside dealing with Parana. He's putting on quite the show now, at this club, too. And, and at this point, this is like drug bust number, what, 37, 38? 
Like, they're eventually going to get this right. Um, <laughs> but it totally starts off like uh, like the disco lights kick on. Tubbs and, and Perino are, like, standing opposite each other. Like, at first, I was like, oh, my God, it's a dance-off. <laughs> After the show is done, they say, okay, can we... Tubby says, can we now get down to business, please? But that's when Miracle Man comes barging in. And I told you, Miracle Man is the only one that's going to clean up these streets. And he comes in in his new superhero uniform. Perena is shocked and afraid. He cannot believe that Miracle Man has spoiled him again. Again, he is there. He pulls out his gun to kill M Miracle Man. But that's when the shootout starts. And the Tubby Duo start to try to protect Miracle Man. And they almost do. But Perano gets off a couple shots, is able to hit Miracle Man in the chest so for a brief moment. I know you think he was going to be wearing a vest, yeah, briefly, because he says that he's invincible in his special suit. And I thought that was going to be a twist that he really did have like a reason why that would make him invincible. I was wrong. Turns out his actual weakness is bullets. It's been bullets <laughs> all along. Either that or it's a Monday and he's his force fields down. <laughs> Could be. We didn't check the calendar. <laughs> After everyone is dead, Terry's crew comes busting in with Izzy. Izzy runs to his cousin. He can't believe now what has happened, what he's put his cousin into. Mm -hmm. Because now he really is responsible for this. If, if Miracle Man had stayed in the hospital. Yeah, he would have been better the, off. <laughs> the Tubby Duo would have busted Parana. That all would have been taken care of. Agia and Parana would be off the streets. And his cousin would still be in the hospital, but now his cousin is dead. And he's beside himself, laying on the floor next to his cousin, asking him to please come back, who's not even his real family, mm -hmm. who's just someone that he grew up with that knows life in Cuba the way that he did and escaped it, yeah, just like he did. But Miracle Man is not going to survive. And Terry feigns heartbreak, and that's when Stan punches him right in the face, knocks him out. Yeah, that was good, good for Stan for punching that jackass. The Tubby Duo pick up Izzy. And they start to lead him out of the room because there's nothing that can be done for Miracle Man. And he just looks back at his cousin and freeze frame on the on the end of the episode. And this is what I was talking about. This hard left turn that we take when we when we go from Miracle Man, funny side character to Miracle Man, serious mental problems and how mm -hmm. police departments work with people who have mental dis Dis disabilities yeah, disabilities also drug addiction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this episode as we talked about in the beginning it's really good i don't want to get too deep into the final thoughts here but i'm sh for sure that all of us in the first 10 minutes of this episode you're like oh god this is why it's a this is a lost episode and by the end it's like oh my god this might be one of the best episodes of the season yeah exactly yeah Oh, exactly. I, yeah, I think uh, you hit it, hit it on the head. I, I think at first I was like, oh, my God, this is gonna, that first scene. Tubbs in the ridiculous <laughs> like a chocolate suit. Gun. And, <laughs> chocolate gun and Tubbs, uh, Miracle Man running out, out, popping out of nowhere. But then yeah, at the end of it, like it was it was a powerful and one of my favorite episodes of the season so far. Well, before we get too far into our final thoughts, let's go take a look at this week's music, because. I definitely want to save all these final thoughts for that for the end of the episode here. Let's first go break down this week's music. All right, John. Season five music has been up and down throughout the entire season. But you know what? I glanced at the music and I saw that we have someone new on here. So I'm really interested to see what you got on this one. Okay, guys. So I'm going to be honest with you. I've been doing this music segment for a while now. And at times, Vice has made it difficult on me having to research different things. They've thrown 19th century composers at me. They've thrown Western sitcom themes at me. Like, they've, they've given me very little to work with at times, including an episode that had no music. And I've been able to make it work. But ah, this week, we have the song Nande by La Familia Andre. And if Remember, La Familia Andre appear, also appeared in the episode The Big Thaw. Now, in that episode, it also featured, my music segment also featured uh, Marley. So I had someone to talk about. It didn't matter that La Familia Andre is a Dominican salsa band founded by Ferdinand Echevarria. Um, that the only bio that there is out there is written in Spanish. <laughs> So you had to get really creative and make up your own bio, <laughs> or you learned oh, Spanish. Yeah. In the, oh, in yeah. the... No, oh no, and, and and it's only like two sentences. 
So <laughs> not, not a whole lot. I know he's on Twitter. I know that. <laughs> No, but seriously, the boat was only like two sentences, and I, I kept, I digged, I dug, I dug. Fernando Echeverria, he lived from 1953 till 2015. He had a career spanning 25 years. He was very popular in the Dominican Republic and South America. He won a bunch of awards that I've never heard of, including the Luna Award, recognizing him as the most in influential inter international artist in Colombian music over the past 20 years. Which is pretty impressive. So, but outside of that, I got nothing. I, 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 I don't know. I'm assuming La Familia Andre is a family. <laughs> <laughs> this is worse than music because they actually gave me something, a band that I already talked about. And uh, yeah, with no bios, not even like a Facebook or there's your music guys. <laughs> You know what, John? It's it's okay. Not all of them can be home runs. Sometimes in in the music segment, you're handed a knuckleball pitcher, and, and the, the, you know, the I'll best tell thing you to this. do at knuckleballs is to not swing at them. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this: the the next couple episodes, we're gonna get some big ones, so it's gonna get better. I can promise you. <laughs> Tune in next week when we get to talk about a very iconic band. It'll be fantastic. So. <laughs> All right, well, let's go give our final thoughts on this, the second of the Lost episodes. Okay, Melissa, what are your final thoughts as a vice, staunch vice defender? This is <laughs> That's a lost, me. This is a Lost <laughs> episode. Where do you stand on this episode? I'm sad that it, it didn't get to go in the in the regular run because I wouldn't have seen it. You know what I mean? When I watched it original aired when it came out on, and I wouldn't have seen it back then. So it would have had to you'd have to buy the DVD to get it. I wouldn't have seen it on USA. I wouldn't, <laughs> that just wouldn't have happened. So, so I'm sad because I love Izzy so much. And I feel like this episode showed Izzy's range so much that he's an actual real person. He's not like this, this comic relief that you just send in when you need something goofy to happen. And he's not like, oh, you know what? Now he's going to be a dancer and he's dressed really silly. And But the truth of it is, is that Izzy is a main source for these for them, right? Like he's come through so many times for information and done so much stuff for the for the, the Vice Squad that it's actually he's he need he's needed. <laughs> so to cut him out of the of the season, I think that's sad. Like also, this was a real serious episode. Yes, there was Goofy and there was Miracle Man. But Miracle Man had a real serious problem. He had, and he had illness. He had, and he was. It's sad. It's almost. It almost got me choked up when he died at the end because Izzy was so sad. And Izzy realized like he had done wrong, and so it's emotional. But mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't keep it in. Like I don't know why they chose to keep in other episodes that I will not name with he who will not be named <laughs> because we get to talk about his stupid acting next week <laughs> already. <laughs> Damn you, Joey. Yeah, I don't understand the logic behind which episodes they kept in and which episodes they... they Obviously, I understand now that they kept in the Joey one because they were trying to make a spinoff. But that spinoff didn't happen for a reason. So <laughs> cutting out the is man yes, is not as we found the right out, way to go it. <laughs> as we found, found out, Joey is the destroyer of sitcoms. <laughs> I like this episode. It's a good episode. It shows, I, I mean, I will say it was kind of weird without Crockett being in it because I feel like we need Crockett to be judging everybody and be like, his, you know how he's always the one who's a deep thinker and then there's poor Tubbs. He didn't get to say anything. So I feel like it was that Crockett was missed, but that's pretty much it. John, what are your final thoughts? I thought this was a really great episode and this is, it, even with the beginning being silly and even with what, even though we don't know at, from the very beginning that miracle man is uh, he has mental illnesses and and he's a drug addict but like this is a story about a guy with mental health problems and everyone letting him down and, and i say that in the way that cops write him off for the most part until he gets shot at and even then they kind of half-ass protect him he's out on the streets like is he you know, even his like family, he's he gets caught up in everything going on, and he's more concerned about. I, I think with Izzy, he just didn't want to see it at first. It's like throughout the episode, his dying at the end of the episode was preventable by him being put in, 
sent back to the hospital when he broke up the first drug bust, the very beginning with Hubs and Crockett, had they arrested him. And then with the TV producer taking advantage of him, this guy who's running around pretending to be a superhero, when really this is this is a guy that seriously needed help. When you saw him with his family, with his uh, wife and his, his wife and daughter came to visit, like you really saw just how 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 bad he was how how low he was everything working at it at the end of the episode with him going and breaking up another drug bust and and, and getting shot like i feel like the episode at the end with izzy sitting over him upset as he is it's 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 izzy realizing he let him down as well as everyone else pretty much in the room it's a really powerful episode and i agree with melissa I feel like it should have been in the regular run instead of the lost episode. From a Vice angle, too, this, I said it earlier in the episode, this is the most we've seen of the ladies, the most speaking parts they've had all season. And I enjoyed Crockett and Tubbs hitting up the case. I mean, I love Crockett, you know, and I miss Castillo. Now we've gone two episodes without him. But it was nice that everyone else was in this one. Well, I don't have much more to add as far as I could be in a good episode and, and everything you guys talked about. The only things I'll add are kind of odds and ends here. This is really heavy on the problems that were affecting people in the late 80s. Drug addiction was affecting so many people, especially the coke and crack epidemic was affecting so many people. They were so frustrated they couldn't stop it. So it makes sense that their general society would latch on to Miracle Man because at least someone was trying something. It felt like the police weren't doing anything. Then entertainment networks were taking advantage of people's plight for a quick buck and trying to tell their story or whatever have you, find a way to get these crazy people on TV, and then they can run stories about it and make money. It sounds an awful lot like an opioid epidemic and people like Dr. Phil capitalizing constantly on people who have family members who are addicted to opioids and bringing, dragging their family in and having them expose the inside of their family in the name of or helping solve this. You're not. You're actually in the business of selling laundry detergent because your role is, is to get is have laundry detergent ads run during your episode. This really is a lot like what we're dealing with as far as drug addictions now. It's just a different type of drug. The other thing that I'll add here is that Izzy, so much has happened to him in his life and at some point in time he's got to get a break right he tries literally everything to make money and to get ahead in life and to stay clean and he just keeps getting sucked right back in and then last point this is evidence this episode is evidence that they could have continued to do Miami Vice without Don Johnson yeah that's that exactly what it is the rest of the yeah. team if they would have if they just would have moved on without Edward James almost and Don Johnson who are busy being movie stars now, they could have continued doing this show without yeah, them. This episode flows just fine without them. Yeah. No, you don't miss them at all. <laughs> I want to, yeah. And I want to point out that there was a particular guest star season two who had originally been oh, auditioned get out of here. for that role. <laughs> and I'm he would have never saying, made it. <laughs> he could have come in and taken it over for him. He could have been a different detective. He could have been Burnett in his, Alias could have been Crockett. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why he didn't get the job. <laughs> but PMT is just as big a pull. Like, yeah. he was, for being a star on yes. TV, yeah. he was a huge star on TV, and having him just be the lead yeah, he would have been, been just fine. I know. Mm -hmm. I don't know why and, they just didn't do that. <laughs> anyways, that's yeah. going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with you to gmail.com. Let us know what you think about this episode. In particular, I want to hear about could Vice have continued to exist without DJ and controversial <laughs> Edward James almost? I feel like based on this episode, because they're not in there and that this was still felt like Vice, but wasn't quite the same. They could have taken it and continued to go. We want to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to support us, all the ways to subscribe. Just a reminder on that support. We'd love to see some notes from you. We have three episodes left of this amazing the most amazing Miami Vice podcast that has ever existed <laughs> so we would love to hear from you before this show ends uh you know love notes to be nice Valentine's Day is coming up you know you can send us a love <laughs> note we won't turn any of them down <laughs> what I'm saying is that if you're on tinder and you run across the <laughs> go with the heat podcast <laughs> send those notes John's way no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.